What is up you guys, it's Director Works Aquatics here. Um, so in this uh, video we're doing a little bit of a uh, unbagging of two uh, new snakes that I've just got. I literally just got home with them uh, from the breeder's place. Now, I don't know which one's in which bag, I can't remember, and I actually haven't really had a chance to check these guys out properly in my seal feed. I just had a quick glance of them and they were bagged up and that was it. So um, yeah, we'll unbag these guys and see how they go. Now, I do know obviously what they are, just don't know what bag they're in. One of them is a uh, black-headed python, don't really have to worry about that one too much, they're usually pretty tame. The other, however, is a jungle carpet, which I've been after one for quite a while, I finally found one. Uh, they're both males as well, they're both sub-adults, around the same size. Uh, the blackhead's a little bigger. Um, so yeah, we'll get straight into it. I guess we'll um, pop this bag aside and uh, we'll get onto this one first. So this is black-headed python. As I was saying before, it's only a young adult and it's a male. This one isn't a het or anything like that. It's just a standard blackhead, uh, which I actually prefer the standard color in these guys opposed to the het blackheads, which is basically just black and white. I actually prefer the natural colors. They get a nice caramel brown color, which looks really nice. So yeah, looks about three to three and a half foot long. Still got quite a ways to go. They do get a fair bit bigger. Now blackheads are a great beginner's uh, snake if you want something that gets a bit bigger than a children's python, but not as big as say a coastal carpet or a diamond. Um, these guys get between six and eight foot, which is considered medium for a python. So they're a great species to start with, they're very easy to keep, quite handleable, very chilled snake. The only uh, drawback to them, uh, that goes for Woma pythons as well, black-headed pyth black pythons and Womas are out of the same family. But their only drawback is these guys really like to eat, like a lot. <laughs> That's great for feeding them, I mean they'll always take food. But the problem with that is they're very enthusiastic about feeding, they get very excited about food quite easily, and they're a very mouthy sort of a snake. They like to chew, and they're kind of a bite first, ask questions later sort of snake. It's not out of aggression, they just like to eat and they get excited, and sometimes they'll maybe just have a bit of a nibble while you're holding them, or they'll have a bit of a chew. Um, which. It, is a, it can be a problem if it's a large blackhead, it can hurt. Sometimes they'll let go, sometimes they won't, because <laughs> they just really want to eat. So, um, yeah, that's the only drawback, is they can be a bit mouthy with, you know, like nipping and biting out of um, excitement that they're going to get fed, is all. They're very, yeah, enthusiastic about food. They love to eat, which is great. I mean, from someone who has kept many different types of snakes, I'd rather the snakes be aggressive feeders than snakes that are finicky and take forever to get them to eat, you know. Jiggling the mouse around, making them think it's alive, has to be the right temperature, all that stuff. Make one little mistake and accidentally got frightened the snake or something and it's just off its food. These guys, they don't muck around, they just smash it straight away. Blackheads are known to just come flying out of the enclosure when they smell food. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of exciting to feed them, I suppose. Now these are um, a ground-dwelling python as well, so if you're setting up for one of these, it's a very simple setup. There's no need for any climbing branches. I mean, look, you can put them in if you want. They might use them, but very rarely. They're a ground-dweller. Uh, so yeah, give them some caves and hides to go in if you like, because they do like something to hide in. Other than that, they don't have any other special needs. Um, they are a desert species of snake, so, you know, they like it warm. You want the basking spot to be about 30 degrees, and the cool spot to be about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. We're in Australia. 
I always forget to mention Celsius after I describe a temperature and people are like, are you talking Fahrenheit or Celsius? Because that sounds a bit cold. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are a great beginner snake because they're just quite handleable, they're quite placid usually, as long as they don't smell food. So that's another thing, if you've been handling food, like if you've been handling the frozen uh, rats or mice or whatever, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly before you hold your um, blackhead. If they smell any food on you, or even if they smell it in the air, that's enough to get them excited and you may get bitten. Interesting fact about the black-headed python is why do they have a black head? Like you look at his head, it kind of looks like he's just been um, dipped in paint. The reason for his black head, this is what they use to thermoregulate in the wild and they can do this just from their head. So what that means is thermoregulate, they'll sit out in the sun to warm up so they can become active. Other snakes will have to sit out on a, a rock or something in the sun and bask for an hour or two, depending on how hot it is I suppose, before they can become active enough to warm to um you know before they can warm up enough to become active. The uh, black head has gotten the black head because it can be in a hollow log or in a burrow or something and it can stay in there and still thermoregulate. All it has to do is stick its black head out in the sun and that's it. The rest of its body can remain under cover and hidden. It just sticks its black head out. Because as I'm sure you guys know, black absorbs heat much faster than lighter colors do. So that is why they have a black head. It's just a little uh, evolutionary advantage that they've evolved with uh, thermoregulating. They can do it just from sticking their head out and nothing else. Another cool feature I like about the black head, other than obviously the black head, it just does make them look kind of different and kind of cool. And honestly, if you saw that black head sticking out of a burrow and that's all you saw, you would swear it was like a red belly black snake or something like that or something else out of the black snake family because on top of being obviously black, the other cool feature these guys share with Woma pythons as well, they don't have that typical um, python shaped head. Their head is very um, bullet shaped. like. A venomous snake's head almost. It's very streamlined and slim and um, yeah it doesn't have like the big buffy python shaped head where it's really fat at the back and it's kind of pear shaped towards the front. It's just very sleek. Even the scales on top of their black shiny head are quite large. That almost looks like a black snake's um, scales on the top of their head. They have very large scales on the top of their head as well. Same as these guys. Don't know if that's something they've evolved as a defense. It's just something I, I've noticed. <laughs> I suppose it could work for them if something did think they were a black snake. Just by looking at their head, they might get left alone. I don't actually know 100% if that's something, something else that has a, they've evolved um, to help them survive. But the thermoregulating with their black head is the reason why their head's black. <laughs> so yeah, as I mentioned before, this one um, is a male. Next up, now I just gotta find a female for it. This one's not old enough to breed yet, it's gonna be another year. It needs to at least double this size. But, um, so I've got no, no hurry there. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy with them. I've been, had my eye on this one for a little while. Didn't even decide to buy snakes today, to be honest. It was kind of a spontaneous thing. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with him. He is absolutely beautiful. I love his temperament, he's just so calm. There was actually three blackheads that I had to choose from. There was this one, another one that was identical size, and a really big one. I chose this one, because this one, from what I was told, had a much nicer personality, the others were quite snappy. So that's why I chose this one. Like, I mean. A few of my snakes are snappy already. I want a few friendly ones. <laughs> so yeah, where are you going? Anyways, I'm gonna go put this guy in his uh, enclosure and I will be back in a second to unbag the next one. All right guys, 
So that means this one is obviously the jungle carpet. Now I've been after jungle carpet for a while. Um, they've been kind of hard to find lately, uh, from breeders at least. So yeah, kind of happy when I got him. So he's sub adult as well. Standard jungle carpet though, he uh, does bite, so I've been told. So hopefully have a little precaution holding him I suppose. It does look nice though. Come on, out we come. So that is the jungle carpet. As you can see, he's about the same size as the blackhead, maybe a fraction smaller. He is um, due to shed soon. That's why he's not the most colorful at the moment. Jungle carpets are generally very colorful snakes. They're really bright. And the breeder I got this guy off assured me he is very bright and colourful. It's just he's due to shed soon, so he's looking a little pale at the moment. I'll update you guys on how he looks after he sheds. I'll probably do another video with him in the future and you'll see that. But, um, so yeah, jungle carpets are a... Look, he's already lining my hand up here to strike at me. So I'm going to keep moving my hand here because this one is big enough where he'll have enough reach to possibly nail me on the face if he wants, provided he catches me off guard. And because I'm talking to a camera, he may as he might actually do that. So I got to keep his hand here moving, so he focuses in on that. Now, jungle carpets are a um, a small species of carpet python. They get bigger than this. Uh, this one's only a sub adult. They get between four and five foot. Not huge. A little smaller than the blackheads. Now they're an absolutely beautiful snake. Not the most um, handleable type of python though. They are notoriously aggressive. It is extremely rare you find jungle carpets that are completely puppy dog tame. They're usually very feisty and snappy like you guys have seen my videos with my jungle jag. What's in a jungle jag? Jungle carpet. That's how you make jungle jags. A jungle jag is a jungle carpet crossed with a coastal carpet. Both of which can be snappy when they're little. Coastals usually tame down, but jungles not most of the time don't tame down. Uh, so they're usually a display snake, which works for me because they're pretty bright and colourful, so they do well as a display snake anyways. So, um, he hasn't had a strike yet. He's kind of cool, that's probably why, because he's been in the bag for a little while. So, good for me. <laughs> oh, he didn't like it when I breathed on him, then he kind of tensed up over it. Keep on looking on my hand. Now, these guys... Um, I wouldn't say they're a beginner's python. They're easy to look after, I'll say that. They're not a beginner's python because, purely because they're aggressive. They're very hard to work with, they're very hard to do anything with. I mean, feeding them's not a problem. They take food like any carpet python does. Um, but when it comes to just generally like maintaining them, they're difficult because they bite. And they're very snappy. You want them to change their water and reach into the tank and get their water out? Good luck. You have to um, put the snake in something first. You can't just reach in and get it. You gotta take the snake out, put it in a bucket or a tub or something, clean the tank and replace the water. Whatever you're doing. That being said, I don't mind having snakes that bite. I mean, it's kind of part of snake keeping, isn't it? I mean, where's the excitement in having all your snakes completely tame? It gets a little boring after a while, doesn't it? At least for me it does. So he's been quite good at the moment, he's just chilling on my hand. He had a little bit of a hiss then. So this one isn't a crossbreed either, this is actually a pure jungle, uh, which is exactly what I was after. And um, these are an arboreal species of snake, like most of your carpets are. So a conclusion for one of these guys, you want to have something for them to climb on and get up high. They're like tall enclosures. Again, the advantage is they don't get too big, so they look quite nice in terrariums. So yes, um, this is a male like the uh, blackhead. These guys are native to um, northern Australia. Well, I wouldn't say northern. <laughs> Queensland, sorry. <laughs> Up north, <laughs> in the rainforest, they're a tropical uh, species of um, python. Purely nocturnal in the wild, as most of your carpets are. 
and these will crossbreed with coastals and produce jungle jags which if you saw my video I did recently with my jungle jag I'm not going to be doing that for reasons that are explained in that video however these can also cross with Darwin's they can cross with diamonds so I could cross them with something else preferably I want to find a female jungle carpet to breed with this one and produce pure jungle carpets. I don't really want to cross these ones. I want to keep the jungle gene as pure as I can. I want to cross Darwin's with other things and Coastal's with other things and even Diamond's with other things. I'm fine to do that. I don't really want to crossbreed anything with jungle carpets. So he's actually been quite good. I mean, he's not, um, he hasn't bitten me yet. Like, the guy I got him off said, when he's in his enclosure, he'll strike and he's quite snappy. Usually once you've gotten him out of his enclosure and you've been holding him for a little bit, he will kind of mellow out and you can hold him without too much worry. But, I mean, look, he is a jungle carpet. I don't trust him fully. <laughs> I can't handle jungle carpets with the same confidence as, say, I would hold my big coaster with, because I've had him for so long, so I know him, but um, these guys are just notoriously snappy, so... You always have to be a little bit more cautious with them. Cautious with them. Cautious with them. See that? <laughs> that was so close. Problem is, I gotta keep him zoned in on my hand now. Because now he's not on my arm, he's on the table. He can take a pop shot at my face right now, but he's still technically attached to my wrist, so I can't entirely back away too much. What I'm gonna do, here we go. Keep your attention here, please. Thank you. So as my breeder was saying, when he's in his enclosure, or when he's on the ground like this, he'll threat display and he'll strike. Once you've been holding him for a while, he supposedly calms down, but I think he was lying. <laughs> and I've just been pooed on too. Great. Something else um, a lot of carpet pythons I've found will tend to do when they're scared, they will musk, which is exactly what he's done here, he's, he's weed on me. So typical of your jungle carpet, he's putting his threat display up, he's got his neck in the S shape, getting ready to strike at me. Um, but that's expected, I kind of knew he'd be like this. He will calm down as he gets bigger, hopefully. All I have to do is hold him. These are a notoriously snappy snake, so it's going to be difficult, but as long as I handle him regular, I reckon I can still get him tame within six months to a year. I mean, it's only been a few months since I got my children's python. He was much more aggressive than this, and um, he's reasonably tame now. He still has the occasional little strike, but he's just gotten a lot better. Are you alright just chilling there, or are you going to have another go? <laughs> Tell you what, it gets you going. <laughs> I'm so used to my little jungle jag taking pop shots out me. I'm not used to something with this much reach. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm gonna pop him back. Wow, he's really arcing up. I'm gonna pop him back now because um, he's just been in the bag for a couple of hours traveling. He's probably quite stressed, hence why he's so aggressive. I reckon under normal circumstances he wouldn't be quite this aggressive. So. I don't want to stress him too much more, so I'm going to pop him back in his enclosure. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.